Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yay! Okay, yay. Okay, so I have a couple of questions for everyone. And I want you to raise your hand, but I need you all to be very quiet when you're doing this, okay? So, I don't, raise your hand if you agree. I don't like spiders. I think they're scary and gross. Okay, okay. You put your hands down. What about ants? Who thinks ants are weird and you don't really like them either? Okay. And what about bees? Bees are scary. They sting, right? Okay. Well, I think a lot of the kids here don't like these three creatures. But it's important to be kind to them because you have to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of them and that they're all living creatures. And all three of these creatures... All three of these creatures have a surah named after them in the Quran. Okay. Okay. Who knows about the story of the spider? Okay. So, when the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr were traveling from Mecca to Medina, were traveling from Mecca to Medina, they were being followed and hunted down by very bad men from the Quraysh. So they went and they hid in a cave. Who knows what happens next? Do you want to say just what happens next? What happens next is that they find a spider web and the spider web like, helps them. Yeah, yeah. They find the grayish fowl of them and they go to a cave and the cave has a big spider web and a bird has laid her eggs in a nest. And they say, there's no way that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, can be in the cave because those spider web would be all broken. But look at that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the spider to save the Prophet ﷺ by building a web. Isn't that so amazing? Yeah. And now, spiders are also amazing for some other reasons as well. They help us get rid of flies and mosquitoes and other bad bugs that could harm us. And also, their spider silk that they make their webs out of is much, much stronger than steel. So it's important that when you see a spider, you don't step on it and you gently take it outside, just like you shouldn't swat away bees. Bees won't sting you unless you go and you hurt them. Bees are really important. Who knows what they do? They give you honey? Yeah, bees make honey, and when they fly from flower to flower, they pollinate the plants. In Surah Nahal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord inspired the bee, saying, Make your home in the mountains and on the trees and the chalices that they erect. Then eat from every kind of fruit and follow the ways of your Lord. There comes from its belly a juice of diverse hues in which there is a cure for the people. There is indeed a sign in that for people who reflect. From this, I think we can all learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the bees how to make their amazing beehives and how to make honey, and it has healing properties. I know when I feel sick, I always have honey, and it makes my throat feel better. Who else has honey when they feel sick? Raise your hand. Honey is also a sunnah food, meaning that it's a food that the Prophet wasallam ate and enjoyed. Who knows what was so special about Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam? Do any of you guys know what Prophet Sulaiman said? He could talk to animals. Yes, so Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam could talk and understand to understand animals. One time when the Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam was walking with his big army, he came upon a valley of ants. An ant warned, oh ants, go quickly into your home so Suleiman and his armies do not crush you unknowingly. Suleiman smiled and made sure his army did not step on the ants and waited for them to go back into the ground. Ants are amazing creatures just like the bees and the spiders we talked about. They live in, com they live in communities just like us and they love to work together. Ants do great things for the soil. They, when they burrow and make their homes underground, they loosen the soil so that the plants can grow healthy and strong. 
And one fun fact about ants is that they can carry up to 20 times their own weight. And some really special ants, like the leaf cutter ant, can carry up to 50 times its weight. That would be like me carrying a rhinoceros. The Prophet ﷺ was extremely kind to animals. He is our example of how we should behave with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and we have sent you, O Muhammad, not but as a mercy for all that exists. The Prophet ﷺ was a mercy for us humans, but also for animals as well. One time, a companion narrates that we were on a journey, and during the Prophet's absence, we saw a bird with its two chicks and we took them. The mother bird was circling above in the air, beating its wings in grief. When the Prophet Muhammad returned, he said, who has hurt the feelings of this bird by taking its chicks? Return them to her. Not only should we be kind to animals and not physically hurt them, we have to make sure we don't stress our animals out. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had a favorite cat named Mu'azza. One time, at one time after the Prophet heard the Adhan, he got up to pray, and he went to go put on his robe. And a cat was sleeping on it. Mu'azza was sleeping on the robe. So instead of disturbing the cat's sleep, he cut off the sleeve, and then he wore the robe. I know when my cat Milo sleeps on my clothes, I just pick him up and toss him off. I have a lot to learn from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Okay, who knows what the only flying mammal is? I have a hint. It's, I have a toy of it right here. Who knows what this is? What is it? Just, just shout it out. Okay, wow, that's, that's very loud. Yes, it is a bat. Um, so, bats eat insects, and some of them also eat fruit. But the bats that live near us, we have 16 different types of bats in the Bay Area. They all eat insects. And this is really helpful because without them, we would have a lot of mosquitoes and a lot of pesky bugs that would harm our food and our um, fruit, fruit trees. Um, so bats also are important because they help pollinate. They help pollinate when they go and drink the nectar from flowers. Who knows how they communicate? Um, they, they use echolocation. They use echolocation. Yeah, they use echolocation. And echolocation is when they, they send out a really high-pitched sound and it bounces off of all objects. Their echolocation is so good, they can get an image of what is in front of them. They can tell the size, the shape, and the movement of a flying insect. Another really cool animal that we live near is the acorn woodpecker. Both the female and the male acorn woodpecker have bright red feathers on their head. If you take a walk or hike amongst the oak trees, you can hear loud sock squawking sounds. They go quack, quack, quack. Okay, maybe not like a dog, but they go like, they have a loud squawking sound. And when they make a hole big enough in a tree, which can take up to 20 minutes, they stick an acorn in it to save for later. The last animal I want to talk about is one that lives near us, and it's called the California Newt. These little guys are bright orange, and they tell predators to stay away from with their color. They are very toxic, so if you pick one up, you have to wash your hands after. They love damp habitats and live near creeks. Now that the rainy season has started, we should be able to see them crawling around. It is really important to take care of the environment and the earth by not littering and making sure to pick up trash when you see it on the ground. Not only will you be getting a good deed, you will also be helping all the animals that get caught in plastic and choke on trash. Remember, all living things glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is important to be kind to them all. I have a small story about animals glorifying Allah that I will read, which I will read by putting the mic in the sand. Okay, can you still hear me? Great, okay. Crocodiles pray. Today is a big day, said Jamal. I know, said his mom. I must not be late, said Jamal. I know. I must, I 
must not be late, said Jamal. I know, said his mom. God willing, inshallah, you will not be late. Jamal put down his milk. I am going, he said. But the bus is not here, said his brother Muhammad. You must wait. The school is far away, said his sister Fatima. You cannot, you, you can't walk. But today is zoo day, said Jamal. The animals eat too, said Jamal's father. You have lots of time. Jamal did not care. Today was zoo day. He jumped up and ran to the door. Jamal, said his mother, take your lunch. Jamal took his lunch and then he ran out. Jamal stood by the road. He looked and looked for the bus. First his brother came, then his sister came, and finally the bus came. Jamal was in first grade. His teacher was Sister Abida. The zoo is so big, said Sister Abida. It has lots of animals. We can see them all. Adam's mother will come with us today. Nora's mother will come too. You must stay with us or you will get lost. Then Sister Abida opened the Quran. Who gave us the Quran, she asked. Who gave us the Quran? Allah gave us the Quran, said the children. Yes, said Sister Abida, it is a book from God. Now I will read to you. She read from the Quran in Arabic. Then she looked at the children. Who can say that in English? No one put up a hand. I, I know, but I can't say it right, said Nura. Then I will tell you, said Sister Abida. Allah says, all things in the heavens and the earth glorify Allah. What does that mean? All the children put up their hands. All things say Allah is great. All things remember Allah. All things talk about Allah. Good, said Sister Abida. You are all right. Do the birds glorify Allah? Yes. Yeah, the birds. Jamal put up his hand. Yes, you can hear them in the morning and night. They glorify Allah. Good, said Sister Abida. All the animals in the zoo glorify Allah too. Now we will go see them. Think of Allah and look at the animals. Try to see how they glorify Allah. They went to the zoo in the bus. The zoo was a very big place. There were lots of cars outside and lots of animals inside. There were lots of people too. You must all stay with me, said Sister Abida. First they went to see the monkeys. There were big monkeys and there were small monkeys. They all glorify Allah, said Sister Abida. One monkey was in a tree. He had his finger in his mouth. He is thinking, said Adam. Yes, said Jamal. He is thinking of Allah. Next, they went to the bears. The bears were on big rocks. One bear was sitting. He was moving his head back and forth. Back and forth he moved. He looks like he is reading the Quran, said Nora. Yes, said Jamal. Some of us move like that when we're reading the Quran. They then went to see the crocodiles. They were inside a big round place. There was a wall there too. Inside the walls there was one crocodile. And he was in front of Jamal. The crocodile was not moving. His eyes were open, but he was completely still. Jamal looked at the crocodile. He looked and he looked. The crocodile did not move. Can you see him glorify Allah, said Sister Abida? No one said a word. They all looked at the crocodile. The crocodile did not move. This is hard, said Sister Abida. It is hard to see him glorify Allah. He is not doing it. This cro crocodile does not glorify Allah. Yes, he does, said Sister Abida. Remember that Allah said, all things in the heaven and the earth glorify Allah. This crocodile does it too. We just can't see how he does it. Jamal looked at the crocodile. He was thinking, he is not doing a single thing. This is a hard one. Never mind, said Sister Abida. Let's go see the seals. The seals were in a big pool. The pool had lots of rocks in it. One seal was on a rock. He opened his mouth and made a noise. He made it many times. Ow, 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 the seal said. It was like the name of Allah. It sounded like Allahu, Allahu, Allahu. All the children jumped up and down. He is saying Allah. He is saying Allah. He is saying a name of Allah. The seal went into the water. He went round and round the pool. Then he shot up into the air and back up on the rock. Next, they went to see the snakes. The snakes were in a big, dark room. Sister Abida did not go inside. She stopped to look at the class. One of these children is missing. 
The one who is gone is Jamal. The mother stayed with the class. Sister Abida went to look for Jamal. She went to the seals. She went to the bears. She went to the monkeys, and Jamal was not there. Finally, she went to the crocodiles. Jamal was there. He was looking at the big, not moving crocodile. Sister Abida was very angry. Jamal, she said, why did you come here? I had to come and see him, said Jamal. You must stay with the class at all times, said Sister Abida. I can see what he does, said Jamal. The crocodile does glorify Allah. Sister Abida wanted to see too. What does, she, what does the crocodile do, she said. He prays, says Jamal. Sister Abida looked at the crocodile. He did not move. Look how still he is, said Jamal. Look how quiet he is. It is just like prayer. Sister Abida smiled. Yes, she said. Maybe you were right. I am. I know I am, said Jamal. That night, all the children had to work on a drawing. They had to draw what they saw at the zoo. The next day, they all got to saw what everyone drew. Some drew bears, some drew snakes, and some drew mon monkeys. Jamal drew a big crocodile, and it looked like this. The crocodile is praying, just like we pray. So it's important to remember that all, animal, all animals are creations of Allah, and they all glorify Allah, and you're going to see some fun animals in a little while, and you have to remember that they all glorify Allah, so be kind to animals.